Hello everybody, this is Nia Filer and I'm here with the Astrological Weekly Message for the week between January 1st, 2021 to January 7th, 2021. Happy New Year everybody! There's a feeling like, like some weight has been lifted off our shoulders with this 2020 behind us. Anyway, I just want to remind you all before we go on that because of um, the great success of this uh, um, special deal that I made, I'm going to extend 50% off on all readings and all courses and private lessons with me until the 17th of January. Utilize that, utilize that and do something good for yourself or for a loved one right now. All my details are in the slide at the end of the video. So, there's a lot of energy in the sky. An energy that is filling us with hope and light and vibrance. And we could feel the vitality of life right now wanting to burst. A lot of us are under quarantine. Everything in the world is still closed because of COVID-19. But we can feel that some of these storm clouds are getting behind us already as some of the countries are already getting vaccinated here in Israel over a million people vaccinated themselves already so and we're only eight million people at all <laughs> you know so that's a good thing but we're still under quarantine um, there's a lot of things going on in the sky this week the first thing is and the energy that we're already under from the, um, I think it was the 30th, that Mercury sextile of 31st, that Mercury sextile Neptune. When Mercury, the planet of communication, sextiles Neptune, <laughs> this could be a great time to utilize your imagination, to utilize your talents in art, to utilize anything coming from the realms of spirit conversing with the muses or connecting to nature it can heighten our communication to become more empathic sympathetic sympathetic and emotional it can heighten our emotional intelligence and sensitivity but it can also make the things that we say less established and more vague and um, dilute the borders and tend to bend them towards a lighter more enjoyable kind of atmosphere it can cause us to be more passive and and indulgent on Saturday the first we're having a grand trine in the sky with the moon Mars and Venus it's a great time to celebrate life celebrate being in a body being with people you love having sex touching each other and um, making love eating food drinking enjoying nature um, just enjoying being in a body and being alive this is a time to celebrate that here we are to remind ourselves what it is that we are fighting for you know it's not about gluttony and it's not about you know infesting in the flesh but it's definitely about honoring it and understanding the sacred worth that this bond between existence and the plane of matter and the spirit, that marriage that is established when we came and we were sucked into this meat glove called the body, that marriage that we're in right now to acknowledge its, its sanctity. That's what I'm asking. And I think that's a great theme to start 2021 with. Acknowledge what we have, cherish and care and tend for what we have. Don't wish for what we don't have, whether it's something you've had before or want to have in the future. That age is over. And if we wish for things we don't have, instead of tending for what we do, we would be unhappy and resentful and unprosperous. Things have changed. In the old paradigm, 
that was almost your short ticket to achieving your dreams and becoming rich, you know, which was the epitome of the capitalistic dream. Strive for what you don't have. Forget about what you have. It's limited and pale comparing to what you can get. That's over. Thank God is that's over. Praise the Lord is hallelujah. Now it's about caring and tending for what we do have. Caring for the garden within without putting essence on that. That's one thing. The second thing is bringing it home, boys and girls and everybody in between. Bring it home and understanding it's all about personal responsibility and communal responsibility. We are fast understanding all over the world that all the heroes we've sent to office, all the leaders and saviors we've sent to do our job and save our ass and take up our responsibilities are doing a bad job. And indeed, whoever we may send would do a bad job. Because when you put something in a meat grinder, it's going to come out minced. That's the nature of the machine. And we are unbelievably fast approaching to the understanding that Joe from New Jersey and Helen from New Hampshire and Paul from London and Sarah from Athens all of us Muhammad from Bahrain and Israel from Israel <laughs> <laughs> Boris from Russia all of us are intelligent enough we know enough things we're not handicapped in any way we can take up responsibility. We can keep the managerial, clerical um, part of the system. The professional part in charge of executing what the um, what the ruler decides to do. And who is the ruler? the people we the people we don't need to send anyone else to do our job anymore the time of elective democracy is fast approaching to its end and direct democracy is dawning we all have electronic de devices that can scan our eyes and scan our fingerprint and if I feel it's important for me to be active and vote when it comes to the allocations of funds regarding renewable energies or healthcare in my country I would be responsible enough to vote I can't do it all day all the time on all subjects but if things are important to me I'll be there and I'll vote and so can you and we could throw away all the elected part that wastes so much money and so much time for all of us and keep only the managerial, clerical part of government in charge of actually doing what we decide is needed to be done. That's another thing I want you to resonate with through 2021. And now, let's continue on with the week. Saturday the 1st, we talked about this Grand Trine. <laughs> Sunday the 2nd, Moon Trine Venus, party goes on. Still a great time to enjoy yourself. And then by Monday the 3rd, the moon is trining Uranus. Be flexible. Try new things. Um, go where you've never taken yourself before. On Tuesday, we have Mercury conjunct Pluto. We're going to feel it from the beginning of the week already. This is an intense time with communication. An intense time with communication. A time for the uncovering of information. The time of... Um, the unveiling of um, information, a time in which we find things that have been hidden, 
that actually change the way we perceive things, that make us understand them deeper and a more authentic level and can create transformation in our society, in the way we think and navigate our culture. It could be an intense time because of it and a dramatic time because of it. Um, and we could feel it throughout the week. Moon is opposite Neptune on the 4th as well, so it's a bit lethargic and forgetful. Um, then Wednesday the 5th we have Venus trining Mars. So as I said, this is the vitality, happy, happy, joy, joy, let's have fun. We're in a physical body, let's feel alive kind of atmosphere that we're having. Um, or as... A songwriter once said, Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, and every sign and every sound. So maybe it's the light coming back, maybe it's the warmth coming back, maybe it's the celestial transits that are aiding. I can definitely feel it. Um. It is though a sensitive day as the moon is opposite Chiron on that day, so especially when it comes to familial ties or emotional matters, intimate matters, be sensitive and careful. Thursday the 6th, Mercury squares Mars. It does that exactly at the end of the week, but we're feeling it already from midweek. This is a time full of agitation, sarcasm, an unrestful time when it comes to our mind, our ideas, our conversation could be heated an imbalanced uh, emotionally. So it is a good time to become more objective. Step away from your emotions and go to your higher mind. Look at yourself reacting. It is not you. It is your emotions reacting. You are not your emotions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so try to remember that on Thursday and onwards because this is something that we could feel throughout the week. Moon squares Pluto on that day just draws in more intensivity um, um, let's say emotional intensivity on that day but Jupiter is sextiling Chiron and this is something we're going to feel for about 10 days it's a great time for healing, for walking forward, for forgetting and forgiving. It's a time that we could rebuild relationships, mend wounds and heal our pains. Praise the Lord is hallelujah. Friday the 7th, Sun sextile Neptune. Great time to go out to nature. Great time to converse with, with, to converse with the muses. Great time to do anything artistic. It's a great time to do anything spiritual. And on Saturday we can already feel the heaviness of Mercury conjunct Saturn. When we're having this time of Mercury conjunct Pluto this week, we can know that the unveiling or understandings or transformations of our words, ideas, things in our media, you know, um, through this week would actually carry a weight next week. They would actually be judged next week and they could end things, they could um, bring things to a halt they can make us feel as if we've hit a block you know things are being judged and if they stand lacking they're going to be disregarded there's going to be um, a price to pay so to speak so through this week with our own words with our own interactions with society bear that in mind that we want next week to prove us good farmers that we've sown the land correctly and now here we are reaping what we've sown and enjoying that harvest, not terrifying it. And on that optimistic note, I want to tell you that I'm so happy you're listening to this. I would really be happy if you share this and comment on this as this exposes this to more people. And I'd be honored to have a reading with you or to teach you evolutionary astrology and of course this is our way of making sure we all get through this great financial turbulation that we're all in by supporting each other 
So utilize this 50% off and let's support each other. May we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.